Well, good morning, everybody. I hope you had a great weekend and also a very meaningful time worshiping the Lord Jesus with us this past Sunday. If for any reason you were not able to be on campus, I hope you'll uh, check out the sermon from this past Sunday online at our website, Facebook page, etc., YouTube channel. So go ahead and do that. But today, in our Bible reading plan, we're in the book of Hebrews chapter 9. And what really spoke to my heart, and I did some time, spent some time thinking about when I read this chapter, is how how God continues doing His work even when things are changing on earth. Just because things that we we care about change doesn't mean God stops. He continues to work. As I've said over and over in the book of Hebrews, the author is uh, comparing Jesus and His sacrifice, the new covenant, to the old covenant, the Jewish sacrificial system and the superiority of Christ, because he's trying to encourage these believers who are of a Jewish background uh, because of persecution not to return to Judaism and abandon Christ. So he's, he's, he's helping them understand that you're going to something lesser and turning away from something greater when you abandon uh, Jesus Christ. Um, but I want us to look at verses 2 through 7, and then I'll share with you what God put on my heart. Starting at verse 2, he says, For there was a tabernacle prepared. That's the, the one in the Old Testament from Moses forward until the first temple was built. In which were the, the lampstand and the table and the sacred bread. This is called the holy place. Remember the tabernacle and later the temple was the building itself had two rooms. The first one, the holy place, the inner one, divided by a curtain, the inner one, the holy of holies. And what he's talking about here is in the outer one. And behind the second veil, going back into the holy of holies, um, there was a tabernacle which was called the Holy of Holies, having a golden altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant, which is overlaid in gold, covered on all sides with gold, in which was a golden jar holding the manna. Remember the manna we read about in, in, in earlier when they were traveling through the wilderness 40 years, and Aaron's rod, which budded. We read about that a few weeks ago, and the tables of the covenant, so the Ten Commandments, the tablets, the stones that were written on and above it, above the, the, the uh, Ark of the Covenant, if you will, um, was cherubim. These, these two angels, one on either end with their heads bowed and their wings folded, touching in the middle. So above it were the cherubim of the glory overshadowing the mercy seat. So it's a symbolic throne of God's presence in the Holy of Holies among the people of Israel. And then he adds something interesting. But of these things we cannot now speak in detail. Now, when these things have been so prepared, the priests are continually entering the outer tabernacle, performing the divine worship. And into the second one, the Holy of Holies, only the high priest enters once a year, not without taking blood, which he offers for himself and for the sins of the people committed in ignorance. Now, we've been reading all about that <clears throat> previously, and we will some more in the weeks to come. But uh, he describes the Ark of the Covenant that's in the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle and then later in, in, in the temple, in Solomon's temple. Um, and in that was the manna, samples of, of the manna, Aaron's rod, and the Ten Commandments. But at the end of verse 5, it's interesting. He said, but of these things we cannot speak in detail. Uh, and a couple of things there. One, he says, that's enough detail. I, 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 we don't have time right now to go into more t detail about that. But there's also another layer. No need to talk about it because they don't exist. The Ark of the Covenant did not exist anymore. It, wasn't, it, wasn't, it was not in the temple in Jerusalem when the author of Hebrews is writing this letter. In fact, the items in the Holy of Holies had been missing from at least 587 B.C. when the Babylonians conquered Jerusalem, burned the city to the ground, um, and destroyed the temple. Burn the temple. Now remember, they had the they had the tabernacle, and then after David died, when Solomon was king, he built the temples referred to as Solomon's temple. Well, years later, the Babylonians destroyed that. When the exiles returned from Babylon, they eventually built a replacement temple, if you will, on the side of the first temple, smaller one, and then centuries later, King Herod would expand it, and that was the temple that existed during Jesus' time. On earth. But uh, there's no mention, 
There's no mention of the items, the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies after the Babylonian invasion in 587 B.C. In fact, um, six decades before the birth of Jesus, in 63 B.C., the Romans conquered Jerusalem, and Pompey, the Roman general, demanded access to the Holy of Holies. Well, that was desecrating it, but he went inside the Holy of Holies, and when he came out, Multiple historians note his response. It was an empty room. It was an empty room. There was nothing in there. So when they rebuilt the temple, when the exiles returning rebuilt the temple and then King Herod expanded it and you had the Holy of Holies that the high priest would enter once a year to sprinkle blood and make atonement for the people's sin, during the entire existence of the second temple, the Holy of Holies was empty. No Ark of the Covenant, no Ten Commandments, no Aaron's rod, no manna, none of that. It was empty. And so think about it. From 587 B.C. all the way up to the time of Christ, Holy of Holies was literally emptied. And then some years later, the Romans uh, in 70 A.D. would actually destroy Jerusalem and the temple. And to this day, there's no temple in Jerusalem. So here's the question. What happened to the Ark of the Covenant? The truth is we don't know. The most likely answer is that when the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem and the temple, we're told they carried articles from the temple back to Babylon. In all likelihood, they carried the Ark of the Covenant and its contents with them back to Babylon. And since it was overlaid in gold, eventually the gold was melted down. Um. There's a rabbinical tradition, a Jewish rabbinical tradition that says priests before Babylon destroyed Jerusalem hid the Ark of the Covenant in a cave underneath the temple and it's still there. That's a tradition. There's no evidence of that. The truth is we don't know. What we do know for a fact is that, that uh, from 587 B.C. forward, the Ark hasn't hasn't been in the temple. Um, so 2,600 years it hasn't existed. And yet, God's work continued. And now, what does that have to do with me and you? I got to thinking, you know, I've been in England, and it's interesting to see some of those large cathedrals that are empty, some of them used as restaurants now, tour sites. You go to... You see that in parts of Europe. You go to Eastern Europe and, and, and ancient churches, ancient cathedrals. Today, many of them are Muslim mosques. It's kind of sad to see. Here in the States, it's sad when you see what used to be, say, 50 years ago or 100 years ago was a church. Uh, but that church over time died. And, they've, and, and, it's, and it's been turned into some other business now. Sometimes a, sometimes a restaurant, just different things. And, it, and it's, it's kind of sad. But yet, new churches are being built, and God's work continues. And here's the point. Here, from, with all of that history, and it's maybe more than you ever wanted to know, here's the point. Um, we love Jesus and serve Jesus. And places and buildings will mean something to us. Institutions mean something to us. We care about them, and there's memories attached with them. But that's not what we love, and that's not what we serve. We love and serve Jesus. And just because an institution ceases or a building ceases to be used doesn't mean God stops working. And I just want to remind you to make certain that you love Jesus more than you love any tradition and that you love Jesus more than you love any place. And you love Jesus more than you love any institution. And you love Jesus more than you love any building. Because those things can go away. But God and His work will always continue. Well, that's the history lesson for today. I'll see you tomorrow.